Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is Friday, and thank you for coming here and listen to what I'm going to share with. And have you ever had this kind of experience? Is that at the time you were reading some poetry or looking at some art pieces, you think, whoa, is it art? Is it even a poetry? I can do even better than what they did. Yes, and as many of you, I also enjoy reading poetry during my free time, but those poetry are written by people, not computer. Yes, and one day I was reading a poetry in Chinese. As you know, our school is having bilingual program, so I love to learn from different culture. So I realized one thing, this poetry gives me the most so sophisticated answer to the question of what is life? How do we describe life? In one Chinese character, it is nat. All right, so that's the whole thing that the poetry have, is that life is a nat. All right, you might have your own opinion about how the life look like or what the life is. But an interesting fact is, the poetry was written t more than 10 years ago. At the time, not many po people in the world are exposed to internet. But nowadays, m more and more people, I believe all of us, are all online. So, to the question of, if we are all online, we got more information, we got better allocation of resources, and also, as we are getting more information about different things, we also got more decisions to make. So as Yoda suggests, do you or don't? There is no try. Yes, I, I have never watched Star Wars, but I think it does make sense in some degree. Yes, and it does spend us time to make all those decisions to every single thing. But my question is, again, if you realize those decisions are hard for you to make, can we get back to the past? I think the past is in, is in the past. We are not able to get reversed. And as this picture suggests well, now we don't need to go to cinema to watch a movie, or we don't need to go to library just to borrow a book, or we can get to know or be friends with other people who we don't really know their name. So, and what is happening? So those are the latest data from Cisco that suggests how did it change over time. So in last year, global mobile data traffic grew for 74% in 2015. And look at all those data. More than half a billion mobile device, uh, devices and connections were just added in the year of 2015. And there were 125 million PCs on the mobile network in 2015, and each PC generated 2.9 times more traffic than the average smartphone. And look at all those things. I think one thing you, will be under you can understand is why I didn't make charts. Yes, all right. So as it is growing very fast, we are getting more. Internet is giving us more. We have better allocation of resources. Now people can do business online without setting their own retail store. And we are also having better accessibility to different resources. And more thing is that internet is good because we have freedom. You can be any kind of people you want to be. You can do anything you want to do on the internet. But you just need to go back to the home, close your door, and just say whatever you want to say in the daytime on the internet, but do be careful with the back door. And those keyboard mans are really strange. They can fight you, just they don't agree with you, and that's uh, the thing to be careful with. And also, at the time we have smartphones are more used in our daily life, we also got more, more multitasking. You can do your work, you can listen to music, at the same time, no matter where you are, whether you are commuting or you are in the room, you are in the office or before you sleep, and the, and the first thing you wake up is probably also looking at a cell phone. So the problem here is 
we spend more time on social network sites, basically, to interact with people. And we are also using more smart devices, not only smartphones, but also smart watches, and also internet of things that connect even other electronic things together. But are we getting more efficient? Yes, it seems we are getting being more efficient because we are busy all the time. If you go to, uh, you to take bus or MRT, you realize people are all with their phones. They all look really busy. And, but is it a real case? So, based on the research done by a US the team from the United States of America, more of the, the youth who is using internet or computers, they are more exposed to multitasking. So, which means youth especially like multitasking than the older people. All right, so uh, how, is it, how frequent is that? And the number they got is for every four minutes, four minutes in average, the youth change one task to another task. Then imagine, the question is, what can you do within four minutes? Can you finish reading and poetry? Yeah, probably, but you can have much more deep thinking. Four minutes is around the length of a song. Yes, and you, after that, you just let it go. So isn't it a strange thing? And typically, multitasking is reducing our efficiency significantly. All right, so you might think, all right, fine. It is about efficiency, so I just entertain myself on internet. Isn't it a still a problem? I don't do work, so why should I be bothered by efficiency? All right, so the question, problem come is not only about efficiency, but more about addiction. How many of you actually went to this kind of process at the time you're watching videos on YouTube? There's always a great video after you already finish another very good video, all right? And so, as we can see, it is changing our lifestyle drastically. And also this, for those people who's working, yes, this man sounds quite funny, yes. Their, their company cannot stand on a cloud anyway, I mean the real cloud, virtually. But the very interesting facts I would like to raise is, is it, I think it is in, very important to be a bit careful while you got a new technology introduced. And because I think, from what I already discussed, not only efficiency, but also the, all those multitasking as you're getting more information, you can do a lot of things on the internet. Are you really getting more? The question is. So there is a concept of, or uh, the concept of in information explosion introduced in 1970s. So basically, what is information explosion? It sounds really strange, it just explodes, but in information explosion is a very sim simple idea that you're just getting a lot of information that you're not able to process. So what do you mean by process? Not only read the information, but also the ability to make judgment, to make decisions based on what you got. So as you're getting more information, there are less free time, definitely. You got more choice to make and also happiness. as we, now we know the party between people that to introduce, uh, to introduce a new friend or to interact with other people is becoming the party of the cell phone, which is a very strange thing. And are you getting more freedom? The thing is, you're getting more freedom, more variety to, cho to choose whatever you want. You're getting more choice. But at the same time, to make more choice means you need to give up more as your opportunity cost. So the more choice you have, you got to give up more. So you're getting less happiness in that sense and definitely less focus because you've got more tasks to do at the same time, but also security. As I discussed, there is always a back door. As the country I come from just block a lot of things that they are having great wars even on the internet. Like I just recently posted something about Panamas in English and they deleted it within 10 seconds. 
which is very efficient. And so I think at the end, we are losing the real efficiency as we are wasting our free time and doing less efficient work. And the amount of the work is a lot. So this is a fact about what we do on the internet for one day. That is the number of the posts of the movie being viewed in one day. Isn't it very strange? But it does show that people really want that. A reason is still, as there are less, there are still more. People actually benefit from that, or more, they just think it is the feeling that they have benefited from that. All right, so another issue to raise is, do we have the right to forgotten? You might think, yes, we're getting less, so I just want to get out of that. Is it possible? But the answer is, it is not possible. So first of all, do we have the right to be forgotten after we pass away? And it is still a very debatable question that, because people's memory are uncontrollable. As you see something, it is. Like somebody is posting fake news on, on the internet, it is spreading very fast, and everybody got a chance to reply, to repost, but is the effect going to be covered fully? So probably that's a question. And if you want to cut off the internet, I mean, it is as simple as putting an elephant into a refrigerator. So only three steps, which are cut the cables, ring the roof servers, and destroy the data centers. So which is very simple, just three steps. All right, so here is the number of the data cables, the fiber optics we have between countries under the ocean, that much. All right, so I don't think there's much possibility to cut all those cables. And here, or the number of the root servers that we have around the world, that much. I think it is impossible to delete all the data inside either. All right, so now the question is, as we cannot remove all the things from the internet, and we are getting something more from it, how do we use the internet in a better way? I think it is a thing that we are going to be thinking about. So it's what we can do. I think, basically, not only what, but at the time you're perceiving information on the internet, also understanding why and how, what is the main motivation be behind the people who is presenting all those things. Are there facts, opinions, or biases? And also, to face but not to escape, act responsibly. At the time you realize you're facing dilemmas on the internet, like people are saying controversial things, I think the, the way for you to do it is definitely not joining the fight, but to think why it is conflict. There are conflicts in, uh, behind of that. And to face the issue that you're having. Do not blind yourself. You, I think to have international awareness is a very important thing as a student. And also, the last thing is think twice or more before you act. Because as though all those things, the effect is not going to be clear completely, even after times. So I think we should all take that initiative and responsibility of, uh, of making the internet better. So I think the thing is, the technology keeps getting advanced. But the way people live their life isn't getting much advanced, or we are still using the ways of thinking that we have before the internet to deal with the things or the issue which we are having on the internet. So I think not only for internet, but for all the technological uh, development, I think we should be aware of the l l more and less, and try to make more, but more, uh, to make more mores and less less. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. So, thank you. <laughs>